hello, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Louise Claire Johnson. I'm the author of Behind the Red Door and I make bookish writing content here on YouTube. And in today's video, I'm sharing the most anticipated new books of fall 2023. So in my fall TBR video, I promised that I would share all of the books that I pre-ordered from my local library and my local bookshop. These are the most anticipated books that are coming out in September, October, and November. I will save all of the December book releases probably for another video that will be more holiday themed, winter themed, but these are the books that I've scavenged the internet. I do a lot of research to figure out which books are coming out by my favorite authors, some that just pique my interest. I've maybe never read that author before and I get to work ordering them so that I'm the first to have them when it's their pub day. So basically these are all the books that are coming out this fall in the next three months that I'm curious to read that will be going on future TBR list that I have on order. I don't know if necessarily I'm gonna like all of them but they've at least piqued my curiosity enough from the synopsis for me to order them or it's just an author that I really love and they're on my auto order list no matter what they put out I will always read it so I have 18 books that I want to share with you today feel free to get out a notebook if you want to jot down their names and pre-order them from your own local library or bookstore I'll do my best to get through them pretty quickly so that this video doesn't drag on too long I don't want you to get bored I'm very excited to share these titles with you let me know in the comments below which books you're excited to read or any that I might have missed that have a release date there are so many books being released in the next three months, September, October, and November. From my research, from everything that I've skimmed and gone through, these are the ones that piqued my personal reading taste the most. I'm sure there's definitely a bunch of great books that I'm leaving off the table. If there's a lot of buzz about them, maybe I'll pick them up as fall goes on. But I just want to note that there are some books I'm probably leaving off this list and it's not on purpose. It's just, I didn't wanna have too many books on pre-order. These are my top 18 fall most anticipated new releases. And I'm gonna talk about these books in order of release date. So the very first book on the list, I actually just got a notification from my local library that it's ready for me to pick up. So after I film this video, I'm gonna hightail it to the library to get into it. And the book is The Fraud by Zadie Smith. She's an acclaimed best-selling British author. She's currently a professor at NYU. She was shortlisted for the Man Booker Prize. I'm sure you've heard of her before. Her book White Teeth won a bunch of awards. So for me, Zadie Smith is always an auto order author. Anything she puts out, I'm going to read just because she's so prolific and so acclaimed and I really do enjoy her writing. So The Fraud came out on September 5th. So The Fraud is historical fiction based on real events in history, which I always love because I know a lot of research has gone into it. And the book is set against the legal trial that divided Victorian England, which was the Tichborne trial. And the book is about who deserves to tell their story and who deserves to be believed. I love the premise. Immediately I was hooked. I'm super excited to crack the spine on this book. I know I'm going to be transported from Victorian era England in the 1800s to Jamaica. Charles Dickens is a character. I'm really, really excited to read this. The next book is Wednesday's Child by Yi Yun Lee. It also came out on September 5th. Lee is the award-winning author of The Book of Goose and Wednesday's Child is her latest collection of stories. So some of the pieces have been pulled from her writing in The New Yorker over the span of a decade. And the themes that tie this collection together are loss, aging, alienation, and the strangeness of contemporary life. So if you've read anything by Yi Yun Lee before, you'll know that she's a very original writer. She kind of tends to write in dichotomies. She can be both tender and unsentimental, funny, but also horrifying, blunt, but then also kind of metaphysical. And there's a very light touch to the way she uses language. It's beautiful, evocative writing. So if you want to read anything by her, I would read it for the prose alone but also just the way she tells stories I find very captivating. So I always like to see what she comes out with and I'm excited to read Wednesday's Trial. The next book is Asking for a Friend by Carrie Claire. I was actually lucky enough to receive an arc of this, so I have a physical copy here with me. Carrie Claire is a local Toronto author. I was so sad I wasn't able to attend her book launch at the Toronto Public Library. I was traveling in Halifax that week, but this book is really hitting me kind of at the perfect time of life. I think you will also find it very relatable if you're anything like me. 
but it's a book about life, love, and the ever-evolving nature of female friendship. So Jess and Clara meet in their college dorm room in 1998, and the book spans two decades of their life. And then as the book evolves, we get to see these two friends navigate marriage, heartbreak, anxiety, isolation, and the complicated existence of motherhood all extremely relatable topics and it asks the question does growing up inevitably mean growing apart i really love the premise of this book because i think it is so relatable to so many women as they grow up they meet in college they meet at university your goals are so different at that age everyone's on the same parallel path but then after you leave university and your lives diverge how do you maintain that friendship as adulthood and all these different demands fall upon you nurturing friendships is the same as nurturing any relationship in your life but it does get more complicated as time goes on so if you're in that phase of life or any of those topics speak to you i think you're going to really enjoy asking for a friend also if you're a fan of firefly lane on netflix again i think you will enjoy this book immensely the next book is one of my most anticipated reads of the entire year and it came out on my birthday september 12th i was so sad i was in halifax so i also had to miss the launch of Daughter by Claudia Day. Margaret Atwood was in attendance and I was very lucky to receive this beautiful arc from Penguin Random House with such a lovely note from Claudia. I am obsessed with this cover. I don't know if you can see the iridescence kind of shimmering there. Such a beautiful book. Claudia always has really cool, unique covers. I'm very excited to display this on my shelf and I devoured this book. I've already read it. Again, it just came out recently and is one of the most buzzed about books for fall for good reason. This is Claudia's third novel, Heartbreaker. Her second book was another favorite of mine. Claudia is also a Toronto-based author, actress, and one of the co-founders along with another Toronto-based author, Heidi Sapinka, of Horses Atelier, one of the most beautiful, stunning clothing brands women-run companies here in Toronto. So Daughter is about a woman caught in her father's web as she strives to make a life and art of her own. So we meet Paul, her father, he's a great novelist, and how he spins a web of lies that affect not only her, her sister, but also her mother. This book is an examination of the forces that drive us to become, to create, and to ultimately break free. For anyone, but especially girls and women who have ever struggled with a complicated family relationship or dynamic, and the ways that we are inexplicably linked to one parent for better or for worse, then this book is for you. The next book is Rouge by Mona Awad. She's the author of Bunny, and Rouge has been described as Snow White meets Eyes Wide Shut, which is a great description in itself. And it's about a mother-daughter in Southern California, and the book has been depicted as a horror-tinted gothic fairy tale. I love that. About a lonely dress shop clerk whose mother's unexpected death sends her down a treacherous path in search of youth and beauty. And it asks the question, can she escape her mother's fate and find a connection that is more than skin deep? The next book is The Vaster Wilds by Lauren Groff. She's the New York Times bestselling author of Fates and Furies. And The Vaster Wilds is about one spirited servant girl who escapes a colonial settlement and finds herself alone in the wilderness. So the book is an adventure story about how she tries to survive on the cusp of colonialism in America. The next book is The Young Man by Annie Ernaux. She, of course, was the winner of the 2022 Nobel Prize in Literature. Again, another auto-order author for me. I devoured every single book of hers. I read a couple of her books actually before I found out that she was the winner of the Nobel Prize, and then I went on an entire binge of everything she's ever written. So I'm very excited to read The Young Man. It was first published in France in 2022. It has since been translated and is now coming out in English. And it is a memoir, an account of her affair with a man 30 years her junior when she is in her 50s. Next up, we have Build the Life You Want, The Art and Science of Getting Happier by Arthur C. Brooks and none other than Oprah Winfrey. So this book I have on order from my library as an audiobook. I've mentioned this before in other videos, but I love getting nonfiction books as audiobooks from my library or Audible, wherever you get audiobooks, if that's your thing. I know not everyone loves to listen to a book, but for me, it's kind of like listening to a really long podcast. So if that's 
interesting to you as well. Maybe you want to get it as an audiobook. Either way, the title of this book alone caught my eye. It's probably stuff we all already know, but it never hurts to be reminded. And the book is about ways you can improve your life right now without waiting for the world around you to change. So I like the concept of we are all 100% responsible for our own lives and our own happiness. And any kind of tips and tricks or just gentle reminders of how to live a happier, peaceful, calmer life, I am all for. The next book is Doppelganger, A Trip Into the Mirror World by Naomi Klein. This book is also nonfiction. For some reason, the cover made me think that it was a novel, but Naomi Klein is an intellectual, a social critic. So this book is kind of part memoir, an experience that she had recently where she was confronted with her own doppelganger who had completely conflicting views to her own, but with both public personas, people were getting confused as to who was who. And then the book also delves into a social and cultural critique on the world we live in now, AI generated texting, new age wellness entrepreneurs, and also the digital reflections that we also put out to the world through social media, which in turn is kind of like our doppelganger. So I'm curious to see what this book is all about. Again, it might be one for audiobook, but I also have it as a hardcover coming in from my library soon. The next book is Glossy by Marissa Meltzer, a book about ambition, beauty, and the inside story of Emily Weiss's Glossier. And this book I've been curious to read for a multitude of reasons. So although this book is nonfiction, it's not necessarily a biography because it isn't written by Emily Weiss. I do find that interesting and hopefully it'll be a more unbiased view of the entire situation. But Emily Weiss, of course, is contributing to this book as well. There's a bunch of different interviews and the book is about beauty, business, ambition, as the title states, and how people become moguls. So from that aspect, I always like seeing how people start off and then rise to the top. And then ultimately, after Glossier became a $1.9 billion brand, eight years later, Emily Weiss stepped down. So I'm also curious about the decision-making behind that once you reach the apex of a goal, of a career, what makes you decide to step away from it all? So that really fascinates me. I was never really a huge Glossier consumer or fan. I definitely, of course, heard of it. It was one of the most disruptive beauty brands in the business and my background, my book, Behind the Red Door, is all about coming of age in the beauty industry. Uh, when I worked at Elizabeth Arden, it's a dual biography memoir. So I am super fascinated and have a bit of inside knowledge of what goes on at a beauty brand. So that part I'm also fascinated by. And then Emily Weiss herself, I remember her being on the hills as the super intern working for Teen Vogue with Lauren Conrad. I was coming of age in 2008 in New York at the same time. I remember seeing her at an event when I was working for Elizabeth Arden. So all of that together has me super excited and interested to read this book and get a peek behind the lens of the rise. And I wouldn't say fall because I don't think it's a fall to step back and change your priorities from not wanting to be the, at the helm of a billion dollar business brand but I'm very curious of the decision making and what went into that. So definitely a book that I am looking forward to reading this fall. Next up we have Bright Young Women by Jessica Knoll. She's the author of My Favorite Sister, Luckiest Girl Alive, which is now a Netflix movie starring Mila Kunis. And Jessica was a former editor at Self and Cosmopolitan. This is her third novel and it's inspired by the real life sorority at Florida State University in Tallahassee, who was targeted by a real life serial killer on his final murderous spree. So it starts off in 1978. And then also we go to Seattle as another girl kind of combines forces to investigate this killing spree. So I love books that are based on real true events. I think everybody does and I have a feeling this one will eventually make its way to screen. It's very cinematic and Jessica already has experience with Netflix. So definitely one that I've seen getting a lot of buzz this fall. The next book is The Wren, The Wren by Anne Enright. She's an Irish author who was born, raised, and currently lives in Dublin. Her novel, The Gathering, won the Man Booker Prize. And she's also been called one of the greatest living novelists by The Times, which if I could ever have that moniker, I think I would die from happiness because that is 
probably the highest compliment as an author to be called one of the greatest living novelists. So her latest book, The Wren, The Wren, is about the inheritance of trauma, wonder, and love across three generations of women. And it starts off with 22-year-old Nell, who leaves her mother's home as she sets off to find her own voice as a writer and live a life of her choosing. I love any book about a writer trying to find their way and cultivate a lifestyle in this kind of bizarre, mysterious existence. Next, we have Death Valley by Melissa Broder. She's the author of Milk Fed and Pisces. And Death Valley is described as a darkly funny story about grief that turns into a desert survival story. So it's about a woman who escapes the Californian high desert to flee a cloud of sorrow and grief that follows her. She arrives at a Best Western motel and the receptionist tells her to take a hike. So she goes on this hike, discovers a cactus with a door. So stick with me here because it does get very imaginative and it kind of for me has elements of Alice in Wonderland. She goes into this cactus, this mystical succulent, and what follows is a very imaginative journey through the desert as she processes her grief and comes to terms with her life. So it sounds like it could be a little out there, a little fantastical, but I'm still very curious to read this book. This next book might be a little controversial. It comes out on October 24th, and it's The Woman in Me by Britney Spears. This is her long-awaited, memoir and I'm a little trepidatious to read this and I'll tell you why. I'm a little trepidatious to read this book but part of me is also curious to hear from apparently what is Britney's voice. I'm sure there are ghostwriters who are involved as well and it is a narrative that needs to sell so I'm sure there's a little bit of exaggeration here and there but ultimately this is her story and this is her voice and I do applaud her having that platform to do so. The part of me that might not want to support this launch and again that's maybe the controversial part is it also feels a bit like a money grab for the publisher capitalizing on someone who's going through a very traumatic time with her family that maybe it should be done more in private. It's kind of like the Prince Harry memoir where you're airing all of your familial dirty laundry so to speak and I'm all again for people having the voice to share their own story in their own words but there is a capitalistic part of it. A publisher is there to make money. They are a business so part of it does feel a little exploitative and I hesitate to say that because I really do have a soft spot for Britney and what she's going through in the public eye. And I want to support her, but I also feel like there are higher powers who might be also taking advantage of a very vulnerable woman at a very vulnerable time in her life. So I wanted to make sure I put that out there because it is one of the most highly anticipated books coming out this October, but just kind of with that caveat and my thoughts about it. I would love to hear what you think about it, whether you agree with me, whether you have a different point of view. I'm here for all of it and would love to have a discussion, so let me know in the comments below what you think if you've made it this far in the video. So the next book is Iron Flame by Rebecca Yeros. It comes out on November 7th. I mentioned this book in my fall TBR list because I'm currently in the process of reading Fourth Wing, which was hugely buzzed about all over book talk, TikTok, like I said earlier, all of the talks. And all I know really about this series, I'm not a huge fantasy reader, but it's basically The Hunger Games with dragons. So Iron Flame is the sequel to Fourth Wing. That's why I wanna read that book first, see what all the buzz is about. And then if I enjoy it, I do wanna pick up Iron Flame. I'm sure it will be a huge hit again. Everyone is waiting in anticipation to get their hands on it. And I mentioned this in the last video, but I'm just so impressed with Rebecca Yaros that she's a mother of six and she manages to pump out over 20 books. So if she can do it, we can all do it. So we can take inspiration from her as an author and how she gets books out there. So that one again, I'm sure you will see it all over your Instagram and TikTok feeds come November. The next book is So Late in the Day by Claire Keegan. She's another Irish author. She was a Booker Prize finalist and I really recently enjoyed her little small 
volume. Her, she writes great short fiction called Small Things Like These. I'll also put that book on the screen. It's just a beautiful, told, short little book. So Late in the Day is another small volume. It's only 128 pages, so I'm sure it'll be quick to get through. It's a collection of three stories about love, lust, betrayal, misogyny, and the ever-changing, ever-evolving relationship between women and men. So it's an examination of gender dynamics, the weight of the expectations on the roles of men and women, and I just think she is a beautiful, prolific writer, so I'm very excited to read this collection of three short stories. The next book is The Mystery Guest by Nita Prose. She is the number one New York Times bestselling author of The Maid, about Molly the Maid at the Regency Grand Hotel. And this book is a standalone novel about an acclaimed author who dies at the Regency Grand and Molly again has to uncover the truth about the murder. So it's a cozy murder mystery. It's a standalone which means it's not necessarily a sequel to The Maid but it does continue the story of that character. Nita is another Toronto based author and The Maid was her debut novel that took off right to the top of the New York Times bestseller list which is amazing for a Canadian author because all of her Canadian sales don't count on the New York Times bestseller list. I don't know if a lot of people know that but she was also a editor at Simon & Schuster. She still actually is an editor as far as I know and then this is her second book so I'm sure it will also be another follow-up New York Times bestseller because Molly the Maid is just such a memorable, lovable character. She kind of reminds me of Eleanor Oliphant the same way that she goes about her life. So I'm very excited to read The Mystery Guest and I'm a huge fan of Nita's work. And last but not least, the 18th book is Happiness Falls by Angie Kim. This book technically came out in August, August 29th, but it is one of my most anticipated books for fall. It was just announced as a Bellatrist September 2023 book club pick, and it is a mystery thriller, again, perfect for this season, about a Korean American family whose father and husband goes missing. And it's an investigation into the man that they thought they knew, but also a mystery as they unravel stories about each other. So this one has a very compelling hook and premise. It's a Bellatrix book club pick, so I'm sure it'll be good. I always love the ones that they pick, so I'm sure to love this one. So that's it. Those are the 18 most anticipated new book releases for fall. 2023. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe, like, comment, all of the things if you're enjoying the content that you're seeing. It really helps out the channel and I really appreciate it. I would love to connect with you. I love talking all things books and writings. I hope you're having a great September so far and I will see you in my next video. Happy reading!